If we can please take our seats. We want to maximize the remainder of our time and get as much work done as we can. Let's continue our holy conferencing to do the business of the church. As we're coming into the room, I do ask that we come in quietly because we are about to start our business. I call this session back to order. Let us pray. Most loving and gracious God, we just give you thanks and praise for the gift of this day, for the gift of your church, for the gift of beloved community. We thank you for the work that has already been done and we trust you for the work that is still before us. Give us your wisdom, give us your grace, give us your courage, grant us your power. All that we do is for your glory, O Lord, and we offer all that we are to you. Prepare our hearts, prepare our minds, that we might be found faithful in well-doing. We want all that we do, O oh God, to honor and glorify you. It is in Christ's name that I pray, and I invite the people of God to say amen. I am Bishop Tracy Smith Malone, the Bishop of the East Ohio Conference, and I am very delighted to um, have sitting with me, backing me up during this plenary, are my two colleagues, but I don't see them behind me. <laughs> Where art thou? Bishop David Wilson, come on down. Bishop Reuben Sines, come on down. Amen. All right, we're going to give them a moment to get to be where I need for them to be. Amen. Okay. All right, I don't see. Here he comes. Amen. Well, while Bishop Reuben Sines is coming, I want to thank um, the both of them for um, being here um, with me to join me in this time of presiding and um, providing some support. Amen? Amen. So the next item of business is the recognition of the new Judicial Council members and those members completing their service. And I, the chair, would like to recognize the president of the Judicial Council, Oswald Tway. Bishop, delegates and friends, it is a great pleasure for me to stand before this conference and introduce the Judicial Council that I served the church from 2016 to today. We have Reverend Dr. Kabama Kiboko, a native of the Congo DRC and a clergy member from the West Ohio Annual Conference. She has served us as our secretary. We have Beth Kipper, a lay member from New York Annual Conference. We have the Reverend Dr. Dennis Blackwell, a clergy member from the Greater New Jersey Annual Conference. We have Reverend Dr. Lou, Louis Tran, a clergy member for the California Pacific Annual Conference. We have Lydia Romero Gulili, a lay member from the Mozambique Sub South Annual Conference. We have Reverend Owen Helensen, a clergy member from the Norway Annual Conference. We have Dinel Taha, a lay member from the Great Plains Annual Conference. And we have Warren Plowden, a lay member from the South Georgia Annual Conference. Warren was the first elected lay alternate. He filled a vacancy created by the death of Reuben Reeves, a lay member from the Philippines Annual Conference. Reuben passed in September 2021. Warren served Reuben's unexpired term. We appreciate the work 
that the council has done. They have served the church in a committed and dedicated way. I would like for you all to show your appreciation for their hard work. Thanks so very much, my brothers and sisters, for your services. Also, during the past, Vandrinium, we were very fortunate to have Reverend Timothy Brewster and Ken Fulton to feel him very ably at various times as alternate members, the first clergy and the first lay alternate members of the council. And we also appreciate their hard work as well. Reverend Dr. Kiboko Beth Kippen, Reverend Dr. Blackwell, Dinel Taha, Lydia Gulili, Warren Plowden, and I, we have concluded our terms of service on the council and we will be retiring from the council. Unfortunately, Dinel and Warren are unable to join us to be here with us today. Now it is my pleasure to present to you the newly elected members of the council who will serve the church for the next quadrennium. We have Harry Jean Olson, a lay person from the Greater New Jersey Annual Conference. <laughs> Molly Hikana Mariwa, a lay person from the Zimbabwe Annual East Conference. <laughs> Bill Waddell, a lay person for the Arkansas Annual Conference. Andrew Vobridge, a lay person from the Michigan Annual Conference. <laughs> Reverend Owen Hellinson, a clergy member from the Norway Annual Conference. <laughs> Reverend Angela Brown, a clergy person from the California Nevada Annual Conference. <laughs> Reverend Susan Henry Crow a clergy person from the South Carolina Annual Conference. <laughs> Reverend Dr. Jonathan Ulendi, a clergy from the East Mindano Philippines Annual Conference. <laughs> and Reverend Dr. Lou Tran, a clergy from the California Pacific Annual Conference. <laughs> Unfortunately, Andrew is unable to be here today. Now to introduce the newly elected officers of the council for the next quadrennium. They are Reverend Susan Henry Crow, the president. <laughs> Reverend Owen Helenson, the vice president. <laughs> and Reverend Angela Brown, the secretary. <laughs> Bishop, I uh, thank you. Thank you. Let's again give praise to God for our Judicial Council outgoing members and our incoming council members. Amen. Okay, so the next item of business um, are our calendar items. Um, and before we get started, I see here in the pool, um, the chair would like to recognize Lonnie Chafin. And if you would go to Microphone number two. <laughs> Microphone number two. Thank you, Bishop. Uh, Lonnie Chafin, Northern Illinois Conference laity, white male. Um, and uh, so it's good to have this moment with you for your home conference, Bishop. Bishop, I would like to make a motion um, that would refer the following calendar items to the following bodies. Number 455 to GCFA, um, 283 to the Standing Committee on Central Conference Matters, 538 to the Connectional Table, 
238 to the Committee on Faith and Order. And to GCFA, it would be 461, 242, and 246. Calendar item 539 to the Council of Bishops. 450 to the Division on Young People. And further, that we would not support petitions that were not supported by the committee. And if I receive a second, I'll speak to this. Okay, we have heard a second. You may go ahead and speak. Bishop, we have had full and, ex and interesting conversations here. We're getting towards the end. I don't want anxiety or pressure to finish all the work to shorten the richness of the conversations we've been, we've been having. In the past, when we get to this point, someone would move to accept all the petitions or not support all the petitions. So I wanted to suggest that we can refer these as a way to keep these ideas before the, the institution and be considered. What this would leave is now five, uh, five items by my tally, Susan will confirm. It would leave 426, which is apologizing to victims of sexual violence, 247 on the readmission of clergy members, 240 on a constitutional, adding gender protection to the Constitution, 453, which is a report on the Committee of Faith and Order, and 550, which is also a constitutional change on the definition of racism. So I'm, I'm trying to say we could focus our time on the constitutional proposals, the report that only we can receive, the apology that only we can make, and the, um, the petition that we had decided to reconsider earlier. Okay, we have a motion um, to refer, and I am going to um, ask that we clear the pool. And what we want to do, I want to make sure that the body um, fully hears and understands what is before you. What is before you is to refer item, calendar item 455 to GCFA. Calendar item 283, to Standing Committee on Central Conference Matters. Calendar item 538, to Connectional Table. Item 238, to Committee on Faith and Order. Calendar items 461, 242, and 246, to GCFA. Calendar item 538, to Council of Bishops, calendar item 450, to Division on Young People. And further, that you would not support petitions that were not supported by committee. So that is what is before the House in this motion to refer. There's a correction, there's a correction. The item to be referred to the Council of Bishops is item 539, okay? So there's a correction for that one particular item to be referred to the Council of Bishops. It should be calendar item 539. This motion requires a majority vote. So what is before you is the motion to refer. Is there any discussion to the motion to refer the various calendar items to the various committees that were noted, and further not to support petitions that were not supported by the committee? You may register to speak. So if you have a desire to be recognized, you need to get into the pool. There is a question. I need to um, recognize Becca Jarrell for a point of information or inquiry. If you can please make your way to 
microphone number one, and if you can come prepared to state what your question is or what your inquiry is. Yes, thank you, Bishop. Uh, Becca Gorell, Clergy, New England Annual Conference. Uh, my question is, could we please have not only the calendar numbers, but their titles for each thing that is being proposed? This is way too fast to search the petitions that I want to make sure are addressed. I am going to ask our coordinator of calendar, Susan Brumbau, if you would please restate those calendar items and also state the title of those so that the body will know what it is that they're voting on. Y'all, I really thought I was done at the microphone. Okay. So, um, the first item is 283 calendar item. The title is Revision of Paragraph 101 for General Conference 2020, Revised for Postponed. Let me actually do a wrap on these so I could get the whole title. Hold on. Okay, now I can see the whole title. Um, so 283 is revision of paragraph 101 for General Conference 2020, revised for postponed 2020 General Conference. That is petition number 20956. I can give you page numbers if that's helpful, if you wanna write them down. Okay, that one, um, ADCA is 1,499, and the final version in DCA is 2,239. I'm guessing I could make a little chart and get it to the truck so you can see it as I read it. Although, the t I can get the titles in all four languages too, but it's, it's going to be hard to display. Hmm? Let's confirm the list. Oh, okay. Yes, thank you. All right, that was the first one. Second one is calendar item 455, DCA page number 2178, petition number 20982, ADCA page number 1507, title is Sustainable and Socially Responsible Investments. Calendar item 538, DCA page 2252, petition number 20698. ADCA page number 372, Next Generation UMC number one, create a commission and call a special session. Calendar item 238, I'll just read the title first, Directing the Committee on Faith and Order to Draft an Official Catechism. That is DCA page 2099, petition number 21081, ADCA page number 1502. Calendar item 461, clarify role of the Judicial Council as related to judicial and administrative appeals. I'll say that again, because it's kind of long. Clarify role of the Judicial Council as related to judicial and administrative appeals. 
DCA page 2179, petition number 20357, ADCA page number 918. Calendar item 242, define administrative appeals process in response to Judicial Council decision 1361. That's define administrative appeals process in response to Judicial Council decision 1361. DCA page 2100. Petition number 20403, ADCA page 939. Calendar item 246, local church land use amendment. That's local church land use amendment, DCA page 2100. Petition number 21057, ADCA page number 1611. Calendar item 539 and 450, both have the same title, Building a Fully Inclusive Church. 539 is petition 20526, DCA page 2235, and ADCA page number 340. Calendar item 450, also building a fully inclusive church, DCA page number 2178, petition number 20147, ADCA page number 409. Those are all the items that the motion was having refer to various bodies. And now I can give you the list of items that were not supported by legislative committee and we received a form to present those to the plenary body. Calendar item 540 also titled Building a Fully Inclusive Church. ADCA page uh, 313, petition number 2002, 20,002. I don't have the page numbers on these, so they were probably in yesterday's DCA. Um, Calendar item 537, submitting petitions to general conference amendment. That's petition number 20079, ADCA page 326. Calendar item 552, full-time and part-time local pastor voting rights clergy session, full-time and part-time local pastor voting rights, clergy session, petition 20104, ADCA page 336. Calendar item 558, local pastors vote on constitutional amendments, it's petition 20107, ADCA, page number 336. Calendar item 553, equalization for voting rights among clergy, voice and vote for the status of retired local pastors. Again, that's equalization for voting rights among clergy, voice and vote for the status of retired local pastors. That's petition number 20683 on ADCA page 1028. 
Calendar item 551, open itineracy. Petition number 20465, ADCA page 1038. Calendar item 557, disaffiliation of annual conferences outside of the U.S. Petition 21063, ADCA page 1545. Calendar item 544, Add Nicene Creed to Doctrinal Standards. Petition number 20159, ADCA page 617. And the last one is calendar item 545. The title is All Belong, Ensuring Inclusive Welcome. Petition number 20241, ADCA page 636. That is the list. Thank you, Susan, for providing that additional information. Um, the chair will recognize Holly Grant for a point of order. Holly Grant, East Ohio, microphone number five, please. Holly Grant, East Ohio, laity. Um, Bishop, I thought I put in for parliamentary procedure as opposed to point of order. Okay, no, you um, put in for um, a point of order, so you would need to go back into the pool to be recognized. Okay. Okay, um, there's another point of order. Jay Williams, the chair recognizes Jay Williams, New England Conference. Microphone number one, please. Uh, Jay Williams, clergy, New England, uh, black man, queer. Actually, before I state my point of order, can you restate the list of the calendar items to be brought to the floor? I might be confused because this is quite a list at this okay. point. Those calendar items to be referred. I'll no, the, the calendar items to be brought to the floor still, so that are not part of the reject or to refer. Okay, Susan will come back to the podium to state those for you. Just the calendar item numbers, I assume. 540. 537. Oh. Oh, the four that we would do? That they're wanting the calendar items that if this yes. were to be referred, what would be the remaining calendar items? Okay. I only show four. Um, there were five, and I do have those here. Okay. Well, then maybe you just have it and you should just go. Okay. <laughs> I'll listen to you. So those five calendar items that would be remaining are as follows. Calendar item 426, calendar item 247, calendar item 240, calendar item 453, and calendar item 550. Those were the five that were stated by Lonnie Chafin when he made the motion to refer. So Bishop, then the point of order is, I believe that rule 34, subsection three, states that petitions that were not adopted by the legislative committee can be brought to the floor by filling out the proper form. So then, in this motion to include it, 
and as you said, it would be by a majority vote, those would be in contradiction. Can you please state the, yes. restate the rule number, rule. please? Yes, yeah, so it's rule 34, subsection three. It's the report of the non-calendar items. So we have a process to bring non-calendar items to the floor that's codified in the rules. This motion bypasses Rule 34, which allows for legislative items to be brought to the floor. Okay, give me one moment, please. So here's where we are. Um, thank you for bringing that to our attention. In order to take such action, it would require a suspension of the rules. And so the body would need to uh, make that decision as to whether or not you will want to suspend the rules in order for this motion to refer, which includes part of the remaining um, items not to be considered in order to take that motion, this body would need to suspend the rules. I am going to confer again. So let me share with you um, where we are so that you can understand so that way you can do what you want to do. The maker of the original motion to refer, the part that was just identified that is in violation of the rule would be those remaining calendar items. So to separate those remaining calendar items you would need to separate those calendar items if you want to consider as a body to refer the ones that were named. And to separate it, you would still need to suspend the rules. So there are multiple processes that would need to take place in order for the body to consider the motion to refer. So what I am going to um, ask is for someone to go into the pool and to acknowledge what it is that you would like to do in light of what is before us and in light of the information I just shared. Here is how this can be handled. Is there any objection to suspend the rules for this to be properly before us? Okay, so the rules are suspended. So the motion is still before us, as it was originally stated. The motion to refer. Okay, there is a point of order. The chair recognizes Lonnie Chafin, microphone number two. Okay, so if you can, all right, he's taken out of the pool. He's waving to be taken out of the pool. So we are back to the motion to refer the items that were stated to the various committees and further not to support the petitions that were not supported by the committee. And again, the motion requires a majority vote. We have persons who are in the pool, so we will now move toward conversation on the motion that is before the body. Okay, there's another inquiry. The chair calls on Beth LaRocca Pitts, North Georgia Conference, microphone number five. Be 
leadership, is there any way to deal with calendar items 552, 558, and 553 that have to do with the voting rights of local pastors? We have many in our conference, and they okay, need a okay. voice. So, so you, you did ask the question, and right now the motion that is before us is the referral of these. So that is not germane to what is before us at this time. I think they were in the ones that okay, didn't I'm get Okay, I'm sorry, I need votes. to recognize you before you speak again. Oh, sorry. Okay, um, and I wanna work with you, so give me one moment, please. So here is what the chair is going to do. The ones that you want to be able to address, your question is, is there a process for how to take those that were a part of the ones that were not supported in order to have a conversation? So what you would need to do in order to do that you will have to make an amendment to add those particular petitions to the list that is before the body. Thank you. You are welcome. Okay, there's another point of information or inquiry. The chair calls on Ginger Gain Sorelli, Baltimore, Washington Conference, microphone number six. And if you can come prepared to state what your point of information is or your inquiry. Yes, thank you, Bishop. Ginger Gaines Sorelli, Baltimore Washington Conference clergy, white, female, adult. My question is the way that Delegate Chafin brought the motion, is that in order or do I understand that part of it? is not still before the body. Are we still looking at the whole thing that uh, he brought before us or yes. not? Yes, Thanks. it is in order um, because you agreed to suspend the rules in order for it to be in order. So as it was originally brought by Lonnie Chafin as that motion, that is what is before the house. It is in order. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so there is another point of information inquiry. The chair calls on Allie Scott from the Wisconsin Conference, microphone number one. Thank you, Bishop. Allie Scott, uh, she, her, I'm a white clergy woman from the Wisconsin Conference. My question is, by including calendar item 283, which is the revision of paragraph 101 um, for the, it's the general book of discipline, would that stop the standing committee from being able to work on the general book of discipline during this next quadrennium? That is a good question and we would need to um, recognize let me turn to the secretary of the, the general conference. We would want to confer with the, with the leadership of the standing committee, but if it is referred back to them, it would be given to them as action that they need to complete before the next general conference. So Bishop, I don't know that that would be something that would prohibit them from being able to do that but we would want to confirm that with the leadership of the Standing Committee. Okay, so the chair is going to call on Bishop Rookert. If you would come to the podium and speak to that question, please. Thank you for calling again on me. <laughs> Harald Drucker, Germany Central Conference, Chair of the Standing Committee, elected yesterday. Well, 
if the petition as it stands is just referred to the Standing Committee, the mandate for the Standing Committee is not really clear. Um, because if we stay with what is in there, it's just that what already has been done. We need a clear man mandate what to do when it is referred to the Standing Committee. And this would be helpful for the Standing Committee to continue its work on working on the uh, General Book of Discipline. So a clarification about the mandate would be very much welcome. Okay, there is another point of information inquiry. The chair calls on Celeste Eubanks, Alabama West Florida Conference, microphone number three. Celeste Eubanks, Alabama West Florida. Um, just a question actually to um, Lonnie. Would uh, the calendar item 455, would that not be referred to Westpath in consultation with GCFA and GB, uh, G, the General Board of Church and Society? I think we may have the referral part wrong. Okay, so that is a question that you're raising, and the chair is going to use discretion to ask for Lonnie Chafin to come back to the microphone, microphone number one, to respond to that question. Illinois conference lady, white male adult. You're not the only to have sent that question to me. Um, so perhaps, but I feel like I've made the motion. I don't know that I can change it on the fly, okay. but I would think they would work in right. partnership. So you just responded to the question. So thank you for the question. Thank you for the information. Now that the body has that information, you can do with what you want with that information. Okay, there are no more um, inquiries. Let me just share with you um, what is in this pool right now so you'll get a sense of what we're contending with up here. There are 14 persons in the pool seeking to amend. And at this time, there are also five persons in the pool to close the debate. So give me a moment so I can discern where we are. Okay, the chair is gonna call on Amy Lippolt, Great Plains Conference, microphone number four for an amendment. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Amy Lippolt, Great Plains clergy, white American female, she, her. I would like to move to amend the petition to remove number 283 from Lonnie's list to refer and put it instead on calendar items to be dealt with today on the floor. Heard a second. You can go ahead and speak to it. Uh, the Standing Committee needs its mandate to finish its work on the General Book of Discipline. I really applaud Lonnie trying to move us forward. I am very regretful that this is actually slowing us down. And uh, I hope that we can take care of this matter and quickly move to our calendar items. Okay. So I'm going to test the House on this. Are you ready to vote? Okay. Hearing no objection, if you get your voting devices ready, what is before the House is an amendment to remove calendar item 283 to Standing Committee on Central Conference Matters to be dealt with today. Okay. The poll is open. If you vote yes, you press one. If your vote is no, you press two. You may vote now.
Okay, the vote is now closed and the results will appear on the screen. Okay, so the amendment um, has carried. We will, the vote is 538 in the affirmative, 91 not in the affirmative. So what you have just done, you have striked out calendar item 283. Okay, so what we have before us is the amended motion with all of the calendar items referred to the respective committees as was noted. And again, not supporting the petitions that were not supported by the committee. You have striked out 283 from that list. I am going to call on I call on Frederick Brewington, who has a speech for New York, microphone number three. Fred Brewington, New York Annual Conference, African American male, uh, older adult, uh, straight. Bishop, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. Um, and to my brothers and sisters, um, uh, throughout the connection. Um, uh, I, I applaud this attempt to, to try and streamline the work that we have to do. Part of the wisdom of that is that we not shoot ourselves in the foot. Uh, we are at a point now where there has been an enormous amount of work done. And the question, I guess, that we have to ask ourselves is, by doing this, are we going to lose any of our uh, corporate memory or forward progress, and I believe not, because they have been referred to the appropriate places where work can be done, and that we can continue the momentum that we have here with a clear understanding where there's been guidance by the committees, but is also available to us to do the work uh, that needs to be done uh, by the referral. So I would encourage us at this point to deal with the remaining items that are left if we indeed, indeed and do pass this uh, uh, referral. Um, and then we allow ourselves not to be filled with the level of anxiety that will come when the clock starts ticking against us. And I yield my 30 seconds. Okay, thank you. The chair now recognizes Odell Horn from North Georgia, who has a speech against. Microphone number five, please. Odell Horn, Laity, North Georgia Annual Conference. Um, I'm speaking against this motion uh, because we do have local pastors who are very concerned that all of their petitions were defeated. And we also have some people who have worked hard on petitions that are being referred that will not be voted upon on this, at this general conference, even though those petitions were sub duly submitted to be voted on at this particular general conference. And the referral then would delay the action to potentially the next general conference. I'm just lost as to why we wouldn't act upon the petitions that were duly passed instead of referring them to agencies to vote on them potentially at the next regional conference or general conference, but also our local pastors do want voice and vote at general conference. Okay, thank you. Let me share with you um, what we um, have in a pool right now. We have 15 persons in the pool seeking to close the debate. We've had one speech for and one speech against the amended motion. 
and we have 16 persons in the pool who are seeking to amend. So I'm gonna test the body. If there is no objection to the motion to close debate, Okay, I am going to call on Emily Kincaid, who has the motion to close debate, and then the body will have to act on it. Microphone number three, Emily Kincaid from Alabama, West Florida. Thank you, Bishop. Emily Kincaid, clergy, Alabama, West Florida, white female. I move that we close debate. Okay, I've heard a second. It is non-debatable, so if you'll get your Voting device is ready, and the ballot will appear on the screen. The motion to end debate, that, that is what you're voting on. If it's yes, you press one. If it's no, you press two. You may vote now. Okay, I am not seeing any flags, and so I am going to um, declare that the vote is closed. If, if the results would appear on the screen, they are on, on the screen. 538 have voted in the affirmative, 108 voted not in favor. So now we are going to go ahead and to proceed to vote. You are voting on the motion to refer as amended and not support the petitions that were not supported by the committee. So again, be real clear what you're voting on. The motion to refer as amended and not to support the petitions that were not supported by the committee. It's been moved and seconded to close debate. The, we're now ready to vote. It does require a two-third vote. Okay, so get your voting devices ready. Let me correct that. Because we handle the suspension of the rules, it does not require a two-third vote, okay? So don't, don't do your vote yet. I just want to give you that clarity. Because you suspended the rules, this is properly before us, okay? You may vote now. If you're voting in the affirmative, you press one. If you're not in favor, you press two. I'm not seeing any flags, so the ballot is closed. The results are now on the screen. 514 in affirmative, and there are 137 in the negative. The motion is adopted. So the items have been referred to the committees that were noted, as well as the various petitions that were not supported by the committee are not adopted. Okay, so here is where we are.
The chair is going to call on Mark Stevenson for a point of information. Microphone number four. Good afternoon, Bishop uh, Mark Stevenson, California Pacific Annual Conference, lay uh, male white. Um, I am going to delay and have uh, Dawn and Giovanni address my question in their report at the end of this session. So that the body is aware of what the question was, can you please state what your point of information was so that the body can have that information? Yes, this is in regards to what uh, GCOR and COSRO monitoring reports have indicated about inclusion, and I had specifically asked about GCFA slate that was elected yesterday about racial and gender inclusion. Okay, so that was the request that you had brought yesterday and was expecting to have a report that was not in the... Yes, it okay. was not addressed this And morning. you're going to get that directly from them? Yes, they will address it uh, okay. at, at the end. Thank you for yielding back time. Thank you. Okay, so here's where we are. We are going back to um, calendar items. Well, we were planning to go back to calendar items, but I see in the pool we have a point of information inquiry. Judith Kenniston, West Virginia, microphone number one. Bishop, I'm Judy Keniston, lay woman from West Virginia. And I, I have a question because I was in the pool for, for, I wanted to try to table that last motion until we could consider the first items. And I wasn't recognized, I was in as a parliamentary requiry. And my question is, what should I have been in to be recognized to table or refer? We scrolled through the pool and did not see you in there for what you just stated. Did you go in under a other parliamentary? Mm -hmm. Yes. The correct one would have been point of information or inquiry. Okay, thank you for that. Sure, thank you. Okay. So let me share with you what we have here in the pool. I'm trying to help the body do the body's work. We have three other parliamentary. We have one point of information inquiry. We have one closed debate. Okay. And you already know the number of calendar items you have before you. So I'm going to test the house. There is a request for the closing. OK. The person took themselves out. And currently, we have nothing pending. So we don't need to go there. So let me call on Marshall Bailey, other parliamentary, Virginia, microphone one. Bishop Marshall Bailey, laity from Virginia. I move to suspend the rules to require that all remaining calendar items be presented to the plenary by committee, including any applicable minority reports, and immediately move to vote without any speeches for or against. So if you could put that in writing so that we can be real clear, so that we can help the body be real clear before there's any action on it. Sure. Okay. How, just through, through a page? Oh, right here. Yes, please. Okay. And so I'm not going to call for a second till we know what we're seconding. You, you need to know and we need to know so we can all be clear. So while we're waiting for that, 
There is a point of information inquiry. Holly Grant, East Ohio, microphone number five. My question, Holly Grant, East Ohio lady. My question, Bishop, is whether you are seeing parliamentary um, procedure questions because I was also in there since the time I sat down to bring up a parliamentary um, issue. And I was not called on on the whole time. I believe that my information could have probably helped us move along, but um, so I guess I'm just wondering if there's something wrong with the system. Okay, so the, the chair recognizes um, what Holly Grant just stated. Um, as I shared with the body, what the pool looked like, and by the time we were scrolling through the pool and what I put before the house, the house took action. And so, um, Holly Grant, my hope is, is that you don't feel disenfranchised by that, that was not intended. Okay, I see two persons, three persons in the pool, and there's a point of information inquiry from Charles Bayou, Michigan Conference, microphone five. If you can come prepare to state what your point of information is or what is your inquiry. May I use microphone number six? Yes, you may. Thank you, Bishop. Um, as we wait for our action on this, will it be in order for a brief moment of personal privilege? What, what is the personal privilege related to? Because our, we're, we're trying to maximize our time and we, we have a lot of items to care for. What is it in reference to? I wanted the general conference to recognize the presence of the spouse of the late Bishop Yambasu of Sierra Leone, who lost his life in a tragic accident, and, and not to do anything else. Yes, um, it is the chair's discretion that we will honor that to recognize Mrs. Yambasu. And I'd like to ask uh, Mrs. Yambasu, who I think is in the hall, to stand I have a great respect, and this conference appreciates the outstanding ministry of Bishop Yambasu, who lost his life in the line of duty, and we praise God for his life and ministry, Mrs. Yambasu. Okay, so we um, have the motion in writing, and I'm going to call on the secretary to the general conference to read it. We were waiting to get it in writing. Please proceed. Thank you, Bishop. The maker of the motion moves to suspend the rules to require all remaining petitions to be presented to the plenary by the committee, including any minority reports, and move immediately to vote without debate. Is there a second? Okay. So the maker of the motion, if you can please make your way back. I'm sorry. This motion, because of what it's requesting, it does require a two-third vote and it is not debatable. So we will have to go immediately to a vote, okay? Because it is a suspension of the rules. It's not debatable. So if you get your voting devices ready. 
and you are voting on suspending the rules as indicated in the motion. If we can get that it's on the screen, motion to suspend the rules. Press one for yes, press two for no. I see no flags, so the ballot is closed. If the results can appear on the screen, and they are, 537 in the affirmative, 108 in the negative, and you have suspended the rules. The motion is adopted. So let me explain what this means that the remainder of the calendar items, that they will come before the body. They will be presented. There will be no debate. We will go right to a vote. Okay, that's where we are. Okay, so let's buckle up and let's get ready here. Okay, give me one moment. We want to make sure that we are all real clear on what those final remainder calendar items are. Give us one moment, please. Okay, so we are going to move to calendar item 426. And the chair recognizes Judith Pierre Okerson and Jesse Lip. Good afternoon, sibling. Thank you, Bishop. I am Judith Pierre Okerson, lay delegate from Florida, a deaconess. My pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I'm a black woman, Haitian American. Bishop, as Susan mentioned this morning, calendar item 426 was printed this morning. This, this, a, I move that we suspend rule 38 which requires item to be in the hands of the delegates for one day before taking action so that we can consider this calendar item. Is there any objection? No objection. So, okay. So Bishop and Jesse will present the item. Okay, please proceed. Good afternoon. I am Jesse Lip, laity from the Great Plains, non-binary. My pronouns are they, them. I'm white, 
34, a person living with disability, and I served as the secretary of the Independent Commission's Legislative Committee. Uh, the item before us is calendar item 426, petition 20,593, found on page 2,334, the last page of today's DCA, and page 900, and 11 of the ADCA. This petition, as amended, was supported 28 to 2 in our committee. However, due to a clerical error on my part, the last section of the petition, starting with the statement of apology, was not printed in the DCA when it appeared on consent calendar A04. And so, we have to come before you now to present it. I was asked to present this petition on behalf of the committee because I am someone who works in the field of serving survivors of sexual violence at the Rape Crisis Center in Kansas City. And so this subject matter is very important to me. People in our churches have suffered harm and our church has compounded that harm in our silence. This resolution and the apology it contains cannot erase what has happened, but it is the first step in committing to do no more harm. And so, on behalf of the Independent Commission's Committee, I urge you to adopt this resolution. Okay, so let me remind you that once the calendar item is presented, we would move straight to voting on the calendar item. So get your devices ready. You will prepare to vote. It requires a majority vote. The question is on the adoption of calendar item 426. The vote is open. If your vote is yes, press one. If your vote is no, press two. Okay, I don't see any flags, so I am going to declare that the vote is closed. And let's have the results on the screen. 561 in the affirmative, 100 in the negative. You have adopted calendar number 426. And it was um, just brought to my attention that within um, this calendar, um, this particular um, petition for the apology, that that apology is to be read in a plenary session of the general conference. And because it does not designate the win of general conference, and we see where we are at this state within this general conference that the apology would not be read until the next general conference because it doesn't clearly state it. Okay. We're going to move now to calendar item 283. The next item of business is calendar item 283 and the chair recognizes Lisa Schubert Noling from the Committee on Faith and Order to present the next calendar item. Merci Monavec. I am Lisa Schubert Noling from the Indiana Conference, clergy, female, white, and she, her pronouns. I am presenting to you item 283, which is found on page 2,157 of your daily Christian advocate, item 283, 
on page 2157 of the DCA, and it relates to petition 20956, 20956 on page 1499 of the ADCA, page 1499 of the ADCA, and it is entitled Revision of Paragraph 101 for the postponed 2020 General Conference. And our motion from the committee is to adopt as amended. Okay. So again, we are going to proceed to vote now that the calendar item has been presented. This motion does require a majority vote. The question is on the adoption of calendar item number 283. If you will get your voting devices ready. Those who are in favor, you're going to press 1. Those who are opposed, you will press 2. You may vote now. I'm seeing no flags. The voting is now closed. If we can have the results of the vote on the screen. There are 552 in the affirmative and 92 in the negative. Consent calendar number 283 is adopted. Our next Item of business, we're going to move to calendar item 453, 453, and the chair calls on Lisa Schubert Noling to present um, this calendar item, and there is also a minority report, and Laura Witkowski, okay, you're here on the stage as well, we're going to first hear the report from the committee on calendar item 453, and then we will hear the minority report, and then we're gonna move immediately to a vote to determine which report you want to take your final vote on. Okay, I'll explain it to you again so you'll know where we are. Um, Lisa, you may proceed. Calendar item 453 is located on page 2178 of the Daily Christian Advocate, and it is petition number 20643 on page 627 of the ADCA, 20643. It is a resolution to adopt the report from the Standing Committee on Faith and Order entitled, Sent in Love, a United Methodist Understanding of the Church. And our motion is to adopt as amended. As a committee, we felt that this was the culmination of 16 years of very hard work from people around the world. We believe it is critical for our ecumenical work as a denomination. It is in line with by water and the spirit and this holy mystery, and it presents our ecclesiology. It also calls for teaching, resources, and study guides to ensure that all church members can access and learn from this document. And our amendment indicates we hope that that work and those documents that would be resources for the local church would continue to be produced. Thank you. 
The presenter of the Minority Report is now recognized. Okay. Let's try that again. The chair now recognizes Laura Wachowski, who will come and bring the Minority Report. Thank you, Bishop. Laura Wachowski, Michigan Conference. She, her pronouns, white, adult, lay, woman. The Minority Report is to refer petition 20643 to the Committee on Faith and Order for additional revision for lay accessibility, clarity, and current reality of our worldwide church. Sense in Love is an important and needed document for the United Methodist Church. The work of the Committee on Faith and Order is deeply appreciated. However, there is more work to be done so that this vital document can reflect our understanding of the church as it is being expressed and developed even at this general conference. While we still have disagreements, as the document itself notes, we are discovering new and healthy ways to address this as siblings in Christ through concepts of contextual freedom and regionalization. And this is very important to our understanding of the United Methodist Church itself. As this is a study of the nature of the divine understanding of the church itself, an emphasis on being a worldwide church should be included. Finally, it comes across as needing a master of divinity to understand it. For what we call a lay-led church, even with a forthcoming study guide, using it appropriately feels unattainable. I say this as an experienced, intelligent, lay woman in leadership. The document needs final editing and revision more than simple editorial corrections. It is not ready for publication and is admittedly being put before us as an unfinished document. As the only body who speaks for the United Methodist Church, we should expect more and can do better than the way this document reads for all of us. Please support this minority report. Thank you. So you have heard the report of the committee. You've heard the minority report. Um, you would recall we've done this a number of times since we've been here, that we treat a minority report as a substitute motion. And so we're going to move right to voting. And so you are going to vote on whether or not you want the minority report to become the motion that you will finally vote on. So it's going to be a two-step. You have to determine which report will be the final report that gets voted on. But for right now, we're voting on whether or not you want to substitute with this minority report. Okay, the body clear? So get your voting devices ready. And the vote is open. The motion to substitute calendar item 453, the minority report. If your vote is yes, press one. If your vote is no, press two. Vote now.
Okay, it seems that all the votes have come in. Okay, I am going to declare that the vote is closed. And if the results, they are there on the screen. The motion to substitute calendar item 453 with the minority report. 396 votes in the affirmative, 276 votes in the negative. So you have voted and have approved the motion to substitute the calendar item with the minority report. So now we move again right to voting again. Okay, we're gonna move immediately to a vote to determine if the minority report will officially be adopted by the General Conference. That's where we are. There's no more debate for the remainder of your work today, okay? So get your voting devices ready. And you are voting to adopt calendar item 453, the minority report. If your vote is yes, press one. If your vote is no, press two. Okay, it seems that the votes are in. The vote is now closed. We have the results on the screen. You have adopted calendar item 453, the minority report, 531 votes in the affirmative, 137 votes in the negative. The minority report form is adopted. Okay. So let me see where we are here. Give me one second. Okay, I see a yellow card, but I'm gonna need you to go into the pool it's not open because we're voting, okay. So I'm gonna, at my discretion, if you can go ahead and make your way to microphone number three so I can hear what your request is. Bishop Lauren Godwin, clergy, white woman from West Virginia, she and her for pronouns, I believe, um, rising for a point of order, I believe we're in violation of a petition we passed just a few moments ago, calendar item 426, because we won't be able to read this apology at the upcoming jurisdictional and central conference gatherings. So I would ask at some point we read the apology while we're gathered at this general conference. Okay, so um, let me call on Gary Graves, the Secretary of the General Conference, to address what you just stated. Bishop, as we read the petition, it would have an effective date of January 1 of the next year. It, we did not find anything in there that said it became effective immediately. If there is time and if the chair asks, we could be able to do that if, if time allows. But I don't believe that the lack of reading it here 
would stop it from being read at a jurisdictional conference if the person in the chair there would want to do that. But the petition itself, unless we have overlooked it, did not have anything that brought it into effect immediately, and everything else would go into effect January 1 of 2025. So here is how the chair is going to rule on this. Knowing the nature of this apology and knowing the hurt and the harm that has been caused, I think that it would be in good faith and in good conscience that we hear the apology. Amen. And so what I'm going to ask is, do we have it up here? I've got it, Bishop, if you need it. Okay, I think they have it. Give me one okay. moment, please. To expedite time, would you be so kind to bring that forward? This gives us an opportunity as the church to acknowledge the harm. We have had services of lament. We've had Thursdays in black. We are a church that stand on the principles of do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. Let us hear the letter. From committee item 426, found on page 2334 of the Daily Christian Advocate. Statement of Apology. Introduction. Sexual misconduct is a current and real problem within the United Methodist Church. Today we acknowledge there are people here who have been mistreated, abused, and assaulted by clergy and lay leaders in the church. We honor those who have shared their stories and those who have sat with their stories in silence. We commend the courage of all survivors of sexual misconduct to walk a path they did not choose. Too often, those who suffer from sexual misconduct are silenced, ignored, or not believed by the church. Sexual misconduct includes psychological, emotional, and spiritual abuse. This apology is a beginning point for confession and hope in prevention and response to sexual misconduct in the United Methodist Church. The United Methodist Church apologizes for the times we allowed our desire to protect the church to outweigh our desire to care for victims and survivors of sexual misconduct. We have allowed polity and protection of the institutional church to prevent us from holding persons accountable, thus perpetuating harm within our local churches and other ministry settings, and damaging the whole United Methodist connection. We apologize for the times we have not listened to you doubted your stories, ignored your wounds, and have not tended to your pain. We believe this has contributed to allowing an unsafe culture to exist. An apology is worthless without a commitment to the challenging work which must follow. The United Methodist Church pledges to, one, apologize in every annual conference across the connection, two, Educate church leaders regarding sacred trust in ministerial relationships and power imbalance within those relationships. Three, provide healing resources to all affected in accordance with paragraph 362 complaint procedures. Four, develop a trauma-informed response to complaints of sexual misconduct. This apology alone is insufficient for healing. The United Methodist Church accepts our responsibility and publicly states our commitment to carry out the steps named to do no more harm. 
May God's blessing and never-ending love guide our work and see it through. We've heard the letter and let us hold in our hearts all who have been harmed, all who have been hurt in the church. Amen. We're going to proceed. We are going to proceed and move on to calendar number 550. Calendar number 550. And the chair calls on Hino Mwenze. Merci. Merci, Bishop, pour la parole que vous m'accordez. Thank you, Bishop, for allowing me to speak. Please uh, wear your headsets as I am going to speak in French. Merci. Thank you. Enoch uh, Mwenze Molenge. I am uh, from the uh, Episcopal area of South Congo and Zambia. I am uh, the uh, president, the chair of uh, the subcommittee of uh, independent commissions. I would like to thank the chair of uh, uh, that committee, Judith as she gave me uh, the privilege to present this item on behalf of the committee and the subcommittee. The item that uh, I present to you is uh, number 550, titled uh, Racial Justice on page 2838, uh, dated April 30th. The number of the petition is uh, 2332 on page 859 of uh, the French version of uh, the DCA, volume 2.2. So, indeed, the sin of racism that was fed by colonialism is a continuous plight. It should not be allowed to continue. The wording proposed is more direct and is not ambiguous for denouncing racism that we are all denouncing. And this is why, dear delegates of this session of uh, General Conference 2024, this is why I would like to invite you to adopt this petition by a massive vote and by supporting it. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. So we have heard the presentation on calendar number 550. We are going to move to vote on whether or not you want to adopt this calendar item. So get your voting devices ready. It is a constitutional amendment, and it does require a two-third vote. So get your voting devices ready, please. So you are voting on whether or not to adopt calendar item 550. If your vote is yes, press 1. If your vote is no, press 2. You may vote now.
I am not seeing any flags. I do see one over here. If someone can provide some assistance, I see a page making their way. Okay. I am going to declare this vote closed. If we can have the results on the screen. Okay. 621 voted in the affirmative, 59 voted in the negative. It did require a two-third vote. You have adopted calendar item 550. Merci, President. Thank you. You're welcome. We are going to move to calendar item number 240. The chair recognizes Amy Lippold. Thank you, Madam Chair. Amy Lippold, Great Plains Conference clergy. Uh, I finally made it to you with a substantive petition. Is this our final? Item for action today, Bishop? No. Okay. I want to take a moment to say thank you to the, my fellow officers from the General Administration Committee, Vice Chair Fred Brewington. If you ever want to have confidence as a chairperson, have Fred Brewington be the person supporting you. Uh, he was tremendous. Nita Dovenspike as our secretary, our vice, our subcommittee chairs, Betty Kazadi. Masao and Ben Williams. They were a tremendous team to work with, and I was grateful uh, to be alongside them. I bring to you calendar item number 240-240. You'll find it on page 2099 of the D DAC. Page 2099 of the DAC. This is petition number 20240. 20240. This petition amends paragraph four of our Constitution, which describes who is eligible for membership in the United Methodist Church. And in that paragraph, it has a list of uh, classes of people that may not be discriminated against. This petition adds in the word gender and also the word ability so that people cannot be discriminated against based on their gender or their ability. This petition uh, comes from the Commission on the Status and Role of Women, and it aligns paragraph four with other paragraphs in our discipline, specifically paragraph 16.1 and 16.14, that also list gender as a protected class. Additionally, both of these amendments, or both of these additions align us with our social principles where we say that we support equal opportunities and rights for all women and girls, and also that we call for the elimination of all barriers that prevent people with disabilities from participating fully in the life of the congregation and in broader society. So the committee had a wonderful discussion about the addition of these and voted uh, overwhelmingly to include them in paragraph four, and we ask for your support of this petition. Okay, we have calendar item 240 before us. This is a constitutional amendment, which means it does require a two-third vote. We're gonna move to voting, so get your voting devices ready. You're voting on the adoption of calendar item 240. You. The vote is now open. If your vote is yes, press one. If your vote is no, press two. Okay, I'm seeing no flags. 
It appears that all of you have voted. I declare the vote to be closed. If we can pull the results up on the screen. You have voted 607 in the affirmative, 67 in the negative, adoption of calendar item. Well, you have adopted calendar item 240. Okay. Let me share with you where we are. We're, we're doing very well. We're in the home stretch here. So we have one more item um, that needs to come before the body in order to complete the work of the day. And before I bring that item before you, I am going to turn to the Secretary of the General Conference. Give me a moment, please. Um, I see you, I'll recognize you in a moment. Um, I'm gonna call on the Secretary of the General Conference um, to read the declaratory decisions from the Judicial Council. Thank you, Bishop. We have received decision number 1502. It is the question that um, centered on the standing of the Interjurisdictional Committee on the Episcopacy. The decision from the Judicial Council reads, under the newly amended and effective paragraph 404.2, the Interjurisdictional Committee on Episcopacy has the authority to recommend to the General Conference the number of bishops in all jurisdictions, provided it follows the process set forth in said provision. We have decision number 1,503. The question centered on paragraph 2,533 and the question as to whether the Board of Trustees could set policy. The decision of the Judicial Council. Nothing in paragraph 2,533 of the 2016 Book of Discipline prevents the Board of Trustees of a local church from adopting policies prohibiting the conduct of worship services that include same-sex marriage ceremonies. So thank you, Reverend Graves, for sharing those decisions. I am going to recognize microphone Number four. Thank you, Bishop. David Livingston, clergy, white male, Great Plains. I'd like to ask for another declaratory decision from the Judicial Council. May I read the request? Read, you can read the request. Thank you. I request a decision, declaratory decision from the Judicial Council regarding the constitutionality and applicability of the amended paragraph 101, 101 as it relates to paragraphs 27 and 31.5 and Article 5 of our Constitution, specifically with our action at this general conference on paragraph 101, do jurisdictions now have the authority to adapt the Book of Discipline in the same manner as central conferences, and is such authority constitutional? Okay, is there a second? Okay. If Thank you, you can Bishop. provide your rationale, please. Thank you, Bishop. The uh, paragraph in question was amended and then approved in that big bundle, so we didn't have a chance to debate it. Adding jurisdiction there doesn't appear to be constitutional, and in the spirit of this fantastic general conference, um, where we've come together to be able to declare our clear intent to stay together in regional bodies, um, I'm really thrilled that the idea of jurisdictions needing to have any ability to make changes is irrelevant because of the regionalization that we have approved here and that we will, I'm confident, adopt in ratification by a wide margin uh, in gratitude for that and out of concern for the constitutionality of this, I would ask for this declaratory de decision. Okay, it is properly before the House. It is not debatable. If you will get your voting devices ready, it does require a one-fifth vote of the body. Give me one moment, please.
the secretary of the general conference um, advised me to make sure that this body is aware that because we are 27 minutes before the adjournment of this general conference that there may not be a response from the Judicial Council before adjourning today. I want the body to be aware of that. Okay? We have a hard, fast stop order of the day 6.30. Okay, so get your voting devices ready. And what you are voting on is to request a declaratory decision from the Judicial Council. The vote is open. If your vote is yes, press one. If your vote is no, press two. Okay, I'm seeing a number of yellow flags, and so if it's not an issue with your voting device, I'm going to ask that let us finish. We are in the middle of a vote, okay? We are in the middle of a vote. So the vote now is closed, and we have the results. They will appear on the screen. And the motion to request a declaratory decision from the Judicial Council is adopted. Okay? Here is where we are. And I am going to move us along. We are at 6.05, and we have one more item that we need to care for. So we're going to care for our business that we need to care for. And depending on how much more time we have, then I will acknowledge some cards, a microphone. we got to get our business done friends, okay? All right. We are at a point here at the General Conference for our last calendar item, which is calendar item number 247 that was moved for reconsideration yesterday. And before we proceed with this, the chair asked Delegate Elizabeth Brick to come forward to the chair, if you will come forward up here so that we can ask you a clarifying question before we proceed with the question. So if I can have Delegate Elizabeth Brick, if you can move expeditiously toward the front. Okay. I need you to come up here, please. Okay, here, thank you. Thank you for your patience. We needed some clarification before we proceed.
Okay. So again, um, our last item is a reconsideration of calendar item 247 and based upon the motion of the suspension of the rules in order to consider all remaining calendar items without debate. We're now going to call up this motion to reconsider calendar item number 247. It was moved and seconded yesterday. You postponed consideration of the item so that we could have the written alternative text. The possible text that the delegate proposes will now be read by the Secretary of the General Conference. Okay? So again, what we have before us is a reconsideration, calendar number 247. And the alternative text is now going to be read by the Secretary of the General Conference. Okay? And then after the possible text is read, we're going to move immediately to a vote. And what you're going to be voting on is if you wish to reconsider the vote. So we're going to hear what it is, and then we're going to move straight to a vote, and you're going to be voting on whether or not you want to reconsider voting on calendar item 247. And for the interpreters, please refer to the document that was provided to you regarding calendar item number 247. So interpreters to make sure that all of our seated delegates can have access to what is before us. If interpreters can refer to the document that was provided to you regarding calendar item number 247. So I'm going to ask now for Reverend Gary Graves to please read the possible proposed alternative text. Thank you, Bishop. And we had to get clarity as to the instructions for utilizing this alternative text. The instructions we received was to substitute legislation for the petition. The maker of the motion now is changing that to this is additional text. And so on page 1656 of the DCA, advance edition, the strike through provision that is there would still apply. On page 2100 of the daily edition, volume five, number five, on calendar R03, committee item 247 contains an amendment that was approved and would still apply. This text is to be entered after all of those items are considered. The text as submitted for your consideration is this. Persons who have been terminated, surrendered, or have had their membership and license for ministry revoked by an annual conference or one of its legal predecessors due to their sexual orientation, gender identity, or for celebrating a same gender wedding or union may have their orders and membership reinstated through the following. One, the former clergy person prior to May 15, 2025 shall request in writing to the chair of the Board of Ordained Ministry and Bishop to have their full membership, provisional membership, or license for ministry reinstated and their ordination or consecration certificate returned in the annual conference in which they previously held membership or through which they were licensed or its legal successor. Two, the Board of Ordained Ministry shall approve the request by two-thirds vote and recommend to the clergy session the reinstatement of the former clergy person. Three, the clergy session may approve reinstatement of the former clergy person by a two-thirds vote. A two-thirds affirmative vote shall reinstate the clergy person immediately 
and the individual may receive an appointment either ad interim if one is available or in the next appointment cycle if reinstatement is less than 120 days prior to the new appointment year. If these three occur, the individual shall be reinstated and given membership and ordination certificates and is a member at the status of their previous membership, full member, provisional member, or local pastor, with all rights and privileges of that membership. They shall also receive an ordination or provisional certificate equal to the certificate that the individual surrendered. If a board of ordained ministry or a clergy session does not reinstate the individual because of conscience, an individual may request or the bishop may request that the individual may be reviewed by another annual conference. In such an instance, if additional time is needed to make this second request, the request period may be extended from May 1st 2025 to November 15th, 2025. This legislation shall take effect immediately following the 2024 General Conference. Okay, thank you, Reverend Gary Graves. You have heard the possible amendment. And again, what's before you is whether or not you want to reconsider calendar item number 240. Seven. This alternative language will be adding text to the calendar item number 247 that was already adopted. So what you have heard will be adding additional text to the calendar item that was already adopted. So there's no debate. We're going to move right to a vote, but I want to remind you again you are only voting on the motion as to whether or not you want to reconsider the vote on calendar 247. Okay, that is what is before you. Everybody clear? All right, let's get that ballot open. Motion to reconsider calendar item number 247. The vote is open. If you want to reconsider, you press yes. If you don't want to reconsider, you press no. I am seeing no flags. Okay, and it looks like we are ready. I'm going to declare that the vote is closed. And if the results can appear on the screen. You have the results. It only requires a majority vote. 424 in the affirmative and 223 in the negative you have voted to reconsider calendar item number 247. We go again immediately to a vote. So you are voting on calendar number 247 with the amendment with the additional language added. Okay, are we ready? All right, get your voting devices ready. The vote is open. Calendar item number 247 as amended. If your vote is yes, you press one. If your vote is no, you press two. We are in the middle of a vote, so if we can um, keep the noise down, please. 
I am not seeing any flags. It appears that you all had an opportunity to vote. I am going to declare that the vote is closed. And let's have those results on the screen. 474 in the affirmative, 178 in the negative. Calendar item number 247 as amended has been approved. It's been adopted. Okay, I'm gonna ask what the nature is, and, and before I do that, it is 6.20. We are at the order of the day for a closing worship, and we will not leave here, this chair will not let us leave here without some form of closure to spiritually center ourselves before we go, okay? So I'm going to just ask, what is the nature? Bishop, I move reconsideration of the referral of 455. There's many people, including West Path, who have been invested in that. It was beyond my vision. I should not have included it on the list. I, I think if we could negotiate, we could debate that under the new rules. I think we can get it done in okay, four Okay, so minutes. let me ask this. Let's, let's work together here because we don't want to do anything that would prevent the church to be able to do the work that the church needs to do. Okay, so what was the number? 455, sustainable investments in fossil fuels. Okay, so I'm gonna test the body, because there's no more debate. Okay, there's no more debate, which means that you can do this in good faith and do it quickly. And so is there any objection in light of what needs to happen with that calendar item that was just mentioned. Any objection to that, just to make sure that it lands in the right place? Okay, so I'm, I'm hearing no. And so we are at 620, here's what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna move us real fast, so get your seat belts on, get your voting devices ready, okay? So, there was an objection, so I'm gonna ask you to vote on whether or not we're going to do this, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna move, okay? So get your voting devices ready. State the calendar item number again. 455 to refer it to to reconsider and refer to West Path. Go back to the mic and be very clear, please. I move to reconsider so we may debate it in this presentation. No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry, 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 no. To present it under the rules we have just established. So we can reconsider, reconsider to vote. I know, I know you're uh, testing your patience with me, Bishop. It's just me. <laughs> no, no, here's, here's the thing. The chair wants to do what is good for the body, the whole body of the church. We don't want any harm done. And what I'm hearing is, and the body will have to decide, but well, we have eight minutes. So does the body want to do this work Reconsider and vote. Okay, so here's what, I'm, here's what I'm gonna do. Get your voting devices ready. Get your voting devices ready. And what I'm going to ask the body, again, is 622. We need to have a closing prayer. We need to have a centering and an, adjour an official adjournment. Okay, but, but this is business of the church. So you're going to vote on whether or not we're gonna continue this business in order to set aside the orders of the day to reconsider the vote on calendar item 455. Get your voting devices ready. Let's open up the vote. This requires a two-thirds vote. 
If it's yes, press one. If it's no, press two. You may vote now. Okay, I'm not seeing any flags. I'm gonna declare the vote closed and we're gonna have the results on the screen. Okay, so you've done your work and this is the decision of your work, 324 votes. Yes in the affirmative, 338 in the negative. So the reconsider of that calendar item has not been approved. So let's settle ourselves. Take a deep breath, everybody. You did good work. You did good work. You were patient with each other. Amen. You truly did the work of holy conferencing. And we give God all the praise and the glory and the honor. And here's what we're going to do now. Just center yourself for a moment. We're gonna to proceed to our closing centering before we prepare to go forth. And I'm gonna call on Reverend Gary Grace for quick announcements. Thank you, Bishop. We continue to receive offerings for the pages and marshals. If you would like to submit those, you can do so to, the, to room 103. For those who were elected to the Standing Committee on Central Conference Matters, you may mark your calendars for your first meeting January 27th to the 29th in Atlanta, and you will hear more by email. At, as you are preparing to depart from your seat, please be sure that you leave your voting card, voting device, and interpretation device at your seat. If you are planning to move um, your ADCAs and DCAs to recycling, those bins are available at the back of the room. Thank you, Reverend Graves. Let us now turn our hearts for a time of centering as we prepare to close. Be still, my siblings, be still. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. As you go, as you go forth from this general conference, tell the world about Jesus. As you go, tell them about his love. As you go, be love, be joy, be peace, be patient. Be kind, be good, be faithful, be gentle, be the body of Christ. As you go, be still and know that God is God and God can be trusted. Let us walk together, beloved of God, and let us never grow weary or tired of doing the work of the kingdom. Amen. We come from love. At our birth, we are claimed as God's own. In our baptism, 
we are incorporated into God's family. By remembering who we are and the baptism we share, we can go from here to the ends of the earth, being true to who we are and how we have been called as unique representatives of Christ on earth. Remember your baptism and be thankful. And are we yet alive and see each other's face? Glory and thanks to Jesus give for his almighty grace. Let us take up the cross till we I declare that the postponed 2020 General Conference is now adjourned. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>